Hi, welcome to Highland Hedgehog Homestead. We're doing canning of chicken broth and bone broth. Uh, we collect bones from what we eat as far as our own chickens and the beef that we buy. Um, I had two containers like this of bone broth that we boiled down at, for 48 hours virtually. And then we put all, all of our equipment here. We have our funnel, the measuring stick for uh, the top of the headspace. Headspace, yes. And vinegar, and a, a pad for the vinegar to wipe off the top of the jars. And then the uh, utensil that t picks them up when they're hot and puts them into the uh, canner. We've got the canner going with some hot water and I've already done uh, five cans or jars and a, one more is going in. We heat the water here, really, really hot water in the, in the jars to heat the jars through, rinse them out. And that's so that they don't crack when you put hot liquid in them. Right. And so I'm going to empty this. We don't want the water in here and we're gonna take it over here and put the funnel in and start ladling it. It takes about seven ladles. And just to reiterate, the hot water is not to sterilize the jars. When you're canning anything over 10 minutes, sterilizing your jars is not necessary. The process does that. You do not need to boil the lids or the rings. Um, ball the compound that is used on the rings which is that red stuff has not been recommended to be boiled since the early 1970s so do not boil your lids or rings um, it actually degrades the compound and means that you'll get a worse seal and more likely to have your seal fail okay now that's seven ladles and uh, from previous um, jars i realize that it has to go up to right here and then i still do measure with my measuring stick and i'm going to put another half ladle in here uh, a little more and then we measure this goes on the rim and this just should be touching the liquid. And hold on, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there are little marks there. See the, the one inch, three quarter inch, half inch. So you have different marks on there. And this requires one inch headspace. I put the top one on and I can use just a little bit more there to make it to the bottom. Is that good? Yep. See how it hits the bottom here? Okay. Now I take my vinegar on a paper towel. This is to di dissolve any grease that's on the very top. And the important part is the very top of the rim here so that your tops will make a good seal and there's no grease there. So I put this on and I hand or finger tighten the lid. Okay, now I take my handy dandy, whatever this is called. Jar lifter. Jar lifter, yes, that's a good, good title. And grab below the rim, nice and tight so you don't drop it, and put it into the water here. Now, should these be touching? Yes. yes. And we're actually going to do one more after this. Oh, really? Okay. Seven. Seven. Hey, okay. So we're gonna do one more jar. Yay! And the recipe we're using is for chicken stock, and this is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving that we're using. Just using a knife to keep it held open. So here's the next step in the canning process. We put all our cans in, put the lid on and locked it, waited for this little pop top to pop up, 
and then vented this spike without the weight on it for 10 minutes, steam coming out. We then put the weight on. The gauge went up to 11, which is that black mark there. We then set our timer for the processing time, which was 25 minutes. Let it run with it always being over 11. Anytime it gets under that pressure mark that you need to hit, uh, you have to reset the time. So we usually hover between 11 and 15 for this portion. Then we turned off the heat and we're letting it come down to zero before we take ow, this weight off. Um, and then we'll let it vent for another 10 minutes before taking the top off and putting the jars on the counter. And we'll come back at that point. Okay, so our gauge has come down to zero. We have taken the weight off of the vent there. And then the other thing that we're looking for is our pressure here is no longer up. So we're going to unlock this top and open it up, allowing the steam, when we take the top off, we wanna angle it away from ourselves so that the steam doesn't come up in our face and hurt us when we open this. I also use gloves so that my hands that are here by the opening don't get steam burned either. And we'll come back when we're pulling the jars out. All right, so now we're pulling the jars out of the canning pot and we're making sure not to tip them in either way because they're still boiling and they're not 100% sealed inside. And we're putting them over here on an insulated surface. So we don't want them right on the countertop because they'll crack the countertop but they're going on a wooden cutting board that you can see we've used before. See, they're still bubbling. And then these jars, as they cool, will ping. Um, and then we'll take the rings off, label them, and put them, once they've cooled for 24 hours, put them downstairs in our pantry. And next up, we're doing squash in a broth base so that we can just dump the jar, blend it, and have squash soup. Yay! <laughs>